If an 800 rated player looked at this position, what do you think they would think about and what move would they play? What if a 1200 rated player looked at the exact same position? Would they play something different? Would they think about anything different? What about a 1600 or a 2200? What move would they play? What would they think about? In this video, we're gonna find out. All right, first of all, a huge thank you to everyone who participated to make this video possible. I literally could not have done it without you. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, a couple of days ago, I posted on the channel asking for volunteers to do three things. One, tell me their rating. Two, look at a position and tell me what move they would play. And three, give me one to two sentences explaining what they were thinking about and why they wanted to play that move. Actually, I had a lot of interest in this with 80 people completing the quiz. The lowest rated player was 557 and the highest rated player was 2100 and we had everything in between. So we actually have a really nice data set to work with and I think you're really gonna enjoy seeing these results. So without wasting any time, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is the data set that was collected. So after everyone emailed me the results, I put everything into an Excel spreadsheet, which is what we're looking at right now. Now I left off the names and email addresses for obvious reasons, but I have the rating, which is this very far left column here, the rating of the player. Then we have for each position. So we've got position one, two, three, and four. We've got the move that they wanted to play and then the reasoning behind why they wanted to play that move. You can see the lowest rated player, 557. And I've got all sorts of range, uh, different ratings all the way down to at the bottom, we have 2100 and then there was two unrated players as well. I also made this little chart here which shows how I divided the players up into different rating groups. So we've got under 900 on the left, 900 to 1100, and then you can see the different groups all the way up to 1600 plus on the right. And a good number of players in each of those groups, you had the most participation in the 11 to 1300 range, but really a good number of players across the board here. Now, the other thing that I did was for each of these rating groups, I wrote an Excel formula to tell me the most common move that people wanted to play. So here, for example, in the under 900, the most common move was knight b5. And then um, over here, 900 to 1100, it was h3, g3, h3, and then 1600 plus g3. So we'll look at those in a little bit more detail when we go through the positions, but that's kind of how I approached uh, tackling, you know, analyzing the data. I know some people, uh, if we go back to the main data set here, some people will probably want to look at this in more detail. So what I'm gonna do is include this file on the Chess Vibes Discord so you can download it yourself if you want to kind of dig into this data and see some of the thought process uh, in a little more detail than what I talk about here in a little bit. So if you're interested in that, link in the description below. If you didn't know that there was a Chess Vibes Discord, there wasn't before this video, I just created one and I'm gonna throw this uh, Excel out there so you can see what I did. Um, so have fun with that if you're interested in that. All right, now the moment that most of you have probably been waiting for, we're gonna actually dive in and look at the different positions. So let's start with position number one. All right, so here's position number one. Now, if you didn't participate in the study, but you would like to kind of jump in now, what I recommend you do is pause the video, spend no more than five minutes looking at this position and figure out what move you would play for white and why, and then resume the video and you can join in as we go through the results. All right, for everyone else who just wants to see the results, here we go. Now, what I'm going to do is start with the lowest group. So the under 900 rated player group, we're gonna see what move they wanted to play, what the thought process was, then we're gonna to move to the next group up, the next group up. We're gonna go through all the different rating level groups. Then I'm gonna share my opinion. I also took this quiz as well. So without looking at the engine, I just figured out what I would play. So here, I'm gonna tell you that. And then lastly, we'll look at what Stockfish says, the actual best move in the position is and why. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So for the under 900 group, the most common move that they wanted to play in this position was knight to b5. And the logic was that they wanted to attack the queen. And a couple people said that after the queen moved somewhere, they were thinking about moving the knight there to get a fork on the, the king and the rook. Uh, nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, most people uh, didn't mention anything about this. And so it's funny because this actually is a pretty good move for dealing with the threat on h2 here because it does attack the queen, but a lot of players didn't seem to notice that. Now in the group from 900 to 1100, the most common move that people wanted to play was h3. And the reasoning here was that a lot of these players saw that there was a checkmate threat. And even though it was defended by the knight, they wanted to get the knight 
out of there. And so H3 was the idea to chase it away. And by the way, if you're wondering, H3 was actually a key mistake in this position that I wanted to see if people noticed. And so the reason that this is not a good move is because there's knight to d4 for black. And the problem that white has now is that their queen's under attack. And if white tries to just simply take the knight, well, then the queen comes in for checkmate because your knight just moved that was defending it. And if you don't take the knight and do something else to save your queen, like maybe you move your queen here, well, then black can capture your knight with check. And when you retake, you have the same problem, checkmate on h2 again. So that was kind of the idea that I wanted to see if people saw. And so that's why the move h3 doesn't actually work. Okay, so if we go to the next group of players, the 11 to 1300 rated players, the most common move was g3. And here, quite a few players actually did notice this. And the idea was that they just wanted to completely stop the queen from being able to get there. So instead of even just chasing it away, they just wanted to block it off completely, which is not a bad idea given, given the circumstance. It's actually a pretty tricky threat to, to figure out a way to deal with. Now for the 13 to 1600 rated group, this is pretty interesting, but the most common move that people said was, guess what, h3. So they didn't see this knight d4 idea that we talked about, and kind of along the same lines as the other group, you know, they just want to chase the knight away, right? And so interesting there that this group of players, I would have expected, you know, more of them to, to notice this, but didn't work out that way. So, all right, then the final group of participants, the 1600 and above group, the most common move that people wanted to play here was G3. And similar idea, they wanted to stop the checkmate. They did, most of them did notice that knight d4 was a big threat. And that's why G3 was the most common move to just uh, completely eliminate the checkmate threat on H2. All right, now it's my turn. So when I saw this position, I did notice that there was a checkmate threat. I noticed that the knight was defending it. And I've actually been in positions similar to this before where the knight will come in and then, you know, I saw that it was gonna be a problem. And so I knew that h3 was definitely not gonna be good. I did consider g3, but I decided that rook to d1 made more sense because rook d1 stops black from playing knight to d4. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, knight to e5 is not the same problem because it's it's blocking the queen from getting there so um, I can even just capture it or something like that so I wasn't worried about that and I thought rook d1 also develops a piece onto a half open file so that's why I wanted to play rook to d1 to kind of do two things at the same time stop the checkmate and also put my rook on an active file and I will finish it off with what the computer says or stockfish so stockfish recommends the move knight to b5 which is funny because if you remember that's what the lowest rated group wanted to play now stockfish's idea is a little bit different so after we attack the queen if black just goes queen to b8 let's say to keep the same sort of threat well now the move that we can play is h3 and you might say well isn't that the same trap as before no it's not because knight to b5 actually controls the d4 square Remember the problem with this move before was that black would play knight to d4 and then we'd have to deal with that problem and end up getting checkmated, right? Um, but now black cannot do that. We simply take it with this knight. So very clever idea of knight to b5 controlling the d4 square and at the same time attacking uh, the queen. So that's what Stockfish recommended. Very interesting idea. One more thing that I'll point out is some players recommended the move knight to d5, which is pretty uh clever because they're attacking the queen, but they're also willing to sacrifice the knight because then they open up the queen on the king and actually get into a pretty nice position. So if you recommended that move, uh, nice find as well. All right, so the big idea behind this position was I wanted to see if people would just instinctively play h3 or if they noticed that knight d4 was a huge threat that you had to deal with right away. So if you did see knight d4, congratulations. But now let's move on to position number two. All right, so here's position number two. If you want to join in with us, go ahead and pause the video now. Remember, don't take any more than five minutes and figure out what move you would play as black. For everyone else who wants to just see the results, here we go. So the first thing I'll say about this position is it was much trickier than a lot of people seemed to believe. Most people said in their comments that, well, this just doesn't look like there's much happening in this position. I'm not really sure what to play. Those are the kind of responses that I got a lot of. And most people didn't see this tactical idea on e4. So the whole point behind this position was it takes, 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 takes. It looks like you just lost a piece, but at the end of all that, you have bishop to f5 and you skewer the queen and the rook. So after the white queen moves somewhere, 
you simply get the rook for free. So you actually come out on top. And a lot of players actually miss that idea. So the most common move at the under 900 range was the move knight to g4. And they were saying that they wanted to attack this h2 pawn and also let out the queen to maybe at some point try to go down there and checkmate white. So that's not a bad idea, but if white plays the move h3, now you have to move your knight back somewhere. You kind of wasted a move, didn't really accomplish too much. And so one tip that I'll give my lower rated players who are watching this video is when you're trying to come up with a plan or an idea in a game of chess, you want to ask yourself the question, is this an easy thing for my opponent to deal with or is it going to be hard for them to deal with it? So in this case, white can very simply play h3. It's pretty easy to deal with. Now you have to move your knight and you don't have a follow-up. If we compare that to the best move in this position where there's this little sacrifice, you're winning a pawn. So really white has to take you, otherwise you just got a free pawn. But then after this move, the threat here is very much harder for white to deal with. In fact, they can't. They have to move the queen and you, and you take the, the rook. So you want to be looking for threats that your opponent really can't deal with. Now in the 900 to 1100 range, it was actually a tie between some players saying the move c6 to try to open up the center and let uh, the bishops out and the move uh, knight f takes e4. So a lot of those players did actually see the idea and then some of the other ones just wanted to open up the position with c6. If we go to the 1100 to 1300 range, most players did see the idea and want to play this move because of the skewer. So congrats to you if you were one of those players. If we go to the 13 to 1600 range next, again, this was the most common move. Most players also found it here, so congratulations. And now something really interesting, if we go to the 1600 and above rating range, the most common move was actually knight to e8. Now, I know some people just started scratching their head going, what in the world, why would they play knight to e8? So let me explain what's going on here. This setup is very similar to a king's Indian defense where you fianchetto the bishop, you play d6, e5, the knight ends up on c5. This is a common theme in the king's Indian. And what a lot of the stronger players realized is that normally in the king's Indian defense, one of the key themes is you want to break at the center with the move f5. And the way you do that is either by moving your knight to h5, so you can play f5, or by moving it to e8, and then you can play f5. And so, the vast majority of the stronger players who saw this position, that's immediately where their brain went. They went, oh, I, I got to break in the center with f5 here. And so knight e8 was the, the most common suggested move. Now, some of the stronger players did see this idea, but it's interesting to me that a lot of them did not see that and were just kind of caught up in, you know, this is what you do in the King's Indian defense, which is not a bad idea. There's nothing wrong with this plan. They just missed a little tactic here that would have won some material. Now, when I looked at this position, I did see the little tactic here. And so I did play at knight uh, f takes e5. One tip that I'll give you guys, whenever you see high value pieces, so think king, queen, or rooks, if you ever see them on the same diagonal, or sometimes even on the same file, like the king and the queen, but in this case, on the same diagonal, you want to ask yourself, can your bishop maybe find some sort of tactic? So, I mean, immediately bishop f5 doesn't work. They just take it. But... If I follow that train of thought a little more, I might ask myself, well, hold on a second. What if I take the pawn to kind of open up that diagonal? And then if I keep thinking about that, I would probably notice takes, takes, oh yeah, bishop f5. So when you're playing games and you see a two high value piece on the same diagonal, keep an eye out for that. There might be a tactic that you can take advantage of. And this one's pretty straightforward. Stockfish also recommends knight f takes e4 because of the tactic, which we already discussed. And here we have position number three. Again, if you'd like to pause the video and participate, go ahead and do that now. Just don't spend more than five minutes. I know this position might be tough, but try to limit yourself to five minutes. But for everyone else who's ready to see the results, here we go. So this position I wanted to include just because it looks like a pretty tough one to play for white. You're, you're kind of defending. It's from a Stafford Gambit. And so even though white is up a piece, it's not a very pleasant position. And so I was curious to see how people reacted to this one. Now, the most common move suggested by players under 900, you probably won't believe, but I'm going to tell you, it was knight to f5. Which, yes, I hope you can see, that's an illegal move. Knight to f5 is not possible because the knight is pinned. 
and most players under 900 actually didn't see that. And I understand where they're coming from. If that's you, I'm not trying to make fun of you or anything like that. Totally get it. There's a lot going on here, and you weren't the only one to, to make that mistake. It was quite common at that range. Um, the reasoning was that they wanted to attack the queen, also defend the square to prevent the queen from going there, which actually is a really, really nice idea behind the move. They just failed to realize the bishop over here. So it's always important to, when you're doing like blunder checks, you know, to make sure you look at pieces that are potentially lined up on your king, like this bishop. Now from the 900 to 1100 range, the most common move the players wanted to play was king to f1. The idea was they wanted to get out of the pin on the knight, and they were also worried about queen to g3 check. And so they thought by bringing the king back here, they could accomplish both of those things at the same time. And actually this position is kind of interesting because the most common move at the 11 to 1300, the 13 to 1600, and the 1600 plus was all king f1. Pretty much everybody, uh, the most common move was uh, king to f1 with the for the reasons that I just mentioned. Get out of the pin and stop the queen check there winning a piece. I will point out that a lot of the players over 1600 said that they really didn't see any good moves for white. And so therefore they would just play king f1. And there was even one player above 1600 who said they would probably just resign if they had this position in an actual game, which I thought was pretty interesting because you're, you're still up a piece at this point, but they just really didn't like the fact that there was all these um, threats for black. So when I looked at this position, I did consider king f1 as a possibility. The reason that I didn't wanna play king f1 is because usually when you have to bring your king back and block your rook in the corner, it's most of the time it just doesn't turn out well because this rook is going to probably end up being a useless piece for most of the rest of the game. I'm not going to be able to get it over to, to E1 or D1 or really anywhere. It's just going to kind of sit over here. So that's why I really didn't want to play king to F1. So the move that I decided on was bishop to F3 because I was expecting this and I was like, well, I'm probably going to lose this bishop anyway because it was kind of trapped, which is, you know, a lot of you guys mentioned that. But I thought, okay, at least here, then it you know allows this space for my king. And the bishop defends the g2 pawn and kind of defends everything. If I want to play d4 later, it just seemed like a good place for that bishop. And so that's the move that I settled on for those reasons. And if we go over to Stockfish, Stockfish recommends the move bishop to g4, which to be completely honest with you, I didn't even consider this move. Um, but some people actually did say that this is what they would play. So if you're one of those players, congrats, you found the best move. And I guess the idea behind this is that after queen to g3 check, you can slide your king over and the queen can't take, sorry, the queen can't take the bishop on g5 now because bishop g4 is blocking it. And you actually still lose your bishop if black wants to go after it with f6 because it's trapped, but it takes some extra time, which is what, which I guess turns out to be really good for white. And then Stockfish recommends d4. And after, let's say, the bishop retreats, you just capture here, you let them take your bishop, and then you can just trade and bring your rook over. And even though black got their piece back, now it turns out that black's king is actually the one who's starting to become uncomfortable. They can't castle this way. Can't castle this way. You've got an open file here. You've got a very strong center. And your knight actually is doing a really good job of kind of defending everything and keeping your king pretty safe. And so this is actually plus 5.7 for, for white. And basically, Stockfish loves white's position here. So for those of you who found bishop to g4, really nice job. That was a tough one to find. I, I didn't even see that myself. And here we have the fourth and final position. So again, if you would like to pause the video, now's the time to do that. For everyone else who wants to see the results, here we go. So most players in this position under 900 wanted to play the move castles. And the logic was that they just wanted to... Uh, protect their king, which normally speaking is a pretty nice move. In this position, it's not the best move, which we'll come to in just a second. 900 to 1100 range, also the most common move was to castle as well. And their reasoning was again to keep the king safe and also to activate the rook. Going to the 1100 to 1300 range, it was a tie between the moves e4 and castles. And so the idea behind castles was basically the same to protect the king and the idea behind e4 was that they wanted to defend this pawn and also let their bishop out which are good ideas uh, they just weren't the best move 
And then if we go to the 13 to 1600 range, we had a tie between castles and queen to a4. And queen to a4 is actually the idea that I was hoping that everybody would see. It's uh, really just a basic fork. Now, it's only a fork on a bishop and a pawn, not like a fork on two high value pieces, but they're both pieces that are undefended. And so this is actually a really strong move. In addition to the fork, you're also getting out of the pin, which allows your knight to now become active if it wants to at some point. And so this is the best move. And, and so like I said, this was a tie uh, for the 13 to 1600 range as the most common move. And then if we go to the 1600 and above, most of those players saw this because of the fork, like I just mentioned. When I did this one myself, this was also the move that I saw. And I actually calculated a couple different lines because really the first priority is the bishop. So what is gonna happen with the bishop? But then also there's a nice little fork here. So I thought, well, bishop to d7 looks like it defends the bishop and defends the pawn but we can just capture here and we're winning a pawn. And it's also really annoying for black because they have to move the bishop. And then we have a discover check with the pawn if we want it, or we can just do something like hop these knights around. Lots of good options for us. The other move that black could play was queen to d7 to defend both of those pieces, but that allows knight takes e5, forking these guys, forking this, really good for us. And there's actually one more move, bishop takes f3 that I thought about and instead of just recapturing and then allowing black to do something, maybe like knight e7 to try to defend, we can take here first with a fork. So for example, queen d7 just loses because we capture the rook. So black's most likely gonna have to play king d7. And then we can take the bishop. And now black's in a terrible position because the king moved up, can't castle, the bishop's stuck. Uh, not good for black. And by the way, if you're wondering, this is called an in-between move. Basically what it means is Normally, when somebody takes your piece, you're going to take them back right away. That's probably what's the expected move. But an in-between move is like, well, I'm going to do that in just a second, but first I'm going to throw in another move. So in this position, I'm going to take that back in just a minute, but first I'm going to throw in a check. And it happens to be a really good check because, you know, here I can have another in-between move where I take the rook and then take this. So it kind of forces black to make a bad move. So in-between move good things to uh, pay attention for if you, if you see those different games. So that was the idea behind this queen a4 line and that's what Stockfish recommends as well. Um, not that these other moves were necessarily bad but they just weren't as good as this because black had no no real response to uh, this, this fork. So those were the four positions. I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned something. Let me know if you like this and you want more videos like this. Also, if you'd be interested in taking these quizzes maybe on a weekly basis and I could do like a weekly video kind of discussing the solutions and talking about the tactical ideas that were present. If that sounds interesting, let me know in the comments because I wanna know if, if I should keep going down this path or if I should kind of go back to some other things. Uh, so yeah, it really would help me out a lot if you guys let me know if you like this or if you don't. But uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.